All right, well, it's my pleasure to once again introduce Alexei Kovalev, um, and he'll tell us about nearly parallel G2 manifolds. Okay, thank you. It's a pleasure to have a second chance to uh, talk more. So this uh, talk is a bit different from the previous one in that uh, it's probably slightly more specialized, but I'll try to keep it again uh, fairly light. Uh, also, it's not directly related, the contents is almost independent from the last talk, uh, but it's in the same subject area, that is seven-dimensional differential geometry, uh, specifically related to the D-group G2. So uh, let me first, uh, uh, on the first slide, I'll just remind what we need to uh, recall about G2. Uh, so one way to uh, introduce it is to write this particular form, um, I didn't try it down last time, so now, so this explicit form on uh, R7, and then consider the action of all the linear uh, isomorphisms, and the stabilize of this form will be uh, isomorphic to group G2. And it uh, also has a property that um, the orbit uh, of this phi is open, um, which is sometimes helpful. For example, the slightly perturbed phi will know that it's a form of the same type, you just need to change the basis. Uh, then, uh, okay, we can use this uh, knowledge to um, express any choice of G2 structure in the manifold by clipping it with the form, which is every point is morphic to this form, for example, phi naught. And um, so then, uh, since G2 is a subgroup of SO7, so it's also an SO7 structure, so that means it's symmetric and orientation, and we have the core generality star. Which allows us to have a well defined four form. Um, and, uh, uh, so, uh, the significance, of course, is that we now can uh, get a lot of information uh, from uh, about the cheaper structure of the seven manifold and different sequences by considering two differential forms and the exterior derivatives. Um, so, in particular, there is a classification. So, we have a cheaper structure, but the cheaper structure may be integral or not, it may have intrinsic torsion. Um, and uh, in several different ways. This was classified by Fernandez and Gray. Uh, there's quite a lot of classes, 16, I think, I remember. Uh, for example, if both the three form and the four form are closed, that means there is no torsion, so the structure is integrable. And then, in particular, by the remaining Valonian principle, the metric induced by phi uh, has the property if you do parallel transport about closed loops. Uh, you come back to the same point, uh, that will be strictly speaking some kind of a, uh, isomorphism of the tension space, uh, but this isomorphism will always be an element of uh, G2 rather than the support channel. So this kind of parallel property, and also the form will be parallel. Uh, however, okay, this is probably the most attractive and most ambitious of the classes, but that's not the class that I'm going to talk about in this lecture. So I'm going to talk about the different one known as nearly parallel uh, G2 structures. So first of all, definition. So uh, in fact, I also wrote it in the abstract. Uh, so we ask that d phi is uh, so it's a full form. It might be a multiple of the Hodge dual. Uh, we ask that it indeed it is a multiple for some non-zero constant w. Uh, one can use spinner geometry to deduce that then the induced metric induced by phi will be Einstein. And then uh, my theorem guarantees to us that if uh, the metric is complete, then the manifold actually will have to be compact and will have finite fundamental group. So this can be compared with uh, something was last uh, asked in the previous talk. Uh, if uh, the Two structure is torsion free on, on compact manifold, uh, then uh, this, um, it will not reduce any further to the proper subgroup precisely when the fundamental group is finite. So it's kind of an interesting and uh, natural uh, thing to, uh, to look for in these topological constraints of some manifolds. So, anyway, uh, if this nearly parallel manifold is complete, it's compact and finite fundamental group. Uh, now, there is a second important point of view. Why this particular structure? Uh, so it turns out that if we form a Riemannian code on this uh, nearly parallel sub manifold, uh, then the resulting Riemannian uh, uh, 
manifold, a manifold will have a uh, long in, in, in itself. So at this point, I'll probably just uh, slightly expand on this uh, statement and clarify uh, so why it is interesting. First of all, uh, so uh, we're talking about volume. That's a group generated by parallel transport uh, over closed loops using the Michigan connection. If the allodomy is uh, G2 or spin 7, uh, then it corresponds to a Riemannian metric Ricci flat. So that's not the only two uh, long reductions which guarantee Ricci flatness, but um, Anyway, these are two which do that. At this point, uh, maybe I'll mention a little uh, remark aside. If, one, if we are looking for Richard Flat uh, compact Riemannian, well, Richard Flat Riemannian manifolds, uh, then uh, one way to do it is by trying to find a method with reduced homonymy, which guarantees the Richard Flatness by the presentation here. As far as I am aware, all the known examples of Richard Flat Riemannian manifolds that are Richard Flat but not flat are obtainable by this homology reduction method. Although they are not always given in this way, for example, one very powerful source of Richard Flat manifolds is Yao's theorem, solution of the conjecture, uh, produces Richard Flat complex manifolds, but they actually happen to have reduced homology, so for them, the only will be SUN, special unitary group. So that's a very challenging open question to produce a Richard Flat remaining manifold, which is not homology reduced. But anyway, that's a bit of a side remark. Uh, now, one more thing important about spin 7. So, uh, so uh, spin 7 has a dimensional representation. Uh, uh, just the spin representation. Uh, if we, uh, so that makes it in the subgroup of SOA. So then, uh, if we consider a subgroup of spin 7 inside SO8, which fixes as a vector, we'll get a subgroup uh, which will be acting on some dimensional space and will be isomorphic to G2. So that's just to kind of make this uh, uh, statement a bit more informative and see why it is interesting. So in other words, uh, we hit a, another special geometry in dimension 8, which I won't talk very much about, but uh, I will need to say a little bit about it. So, um, okay, if we uh, assume in addition that M is simply connected, we know that M will have a finite number group anyway. If it's, uh, complete. So, and if it's not a standard sounds here, there are actually three possible cases. They come from a classification of the groups due to Berger. So, one is uh, this complex symplectic group of rank two. Uh, that implies that the metric is hyperkähler, which means it's scaling in three different ways, and tangent spaces has a natural identific identification with protonions. So in this present case, it's a two-dimensional protonion in space. Uh, so this is actually the possibility which I will not discuss very much in this talk, but these three Sasaki manifolds are, uh, have been extensively studied, as there is a number of good results about them. Uh, another possibility, uh, that this uh, code will have an only SU4. Uh, so uh, SU4 contains SP2 as a subgroup, and SU4 itself is a subgroup of spin 7. Perhaps it's worth writing this down as well. So SP2 is inside SU4, and that's inside spin 7. So uh, an only SU4 means that it's a Calabi L space, it's a rich flat Taylor matrix. But not hyper -tailor. so it's not, not, it's not more symmetric. Not uh, then, uh, one last possibility if we get all of the spins of spin 7 as a one group, so this is called a proper, uh, proper uh, nearly parallel G So these are the three possibilities, at least if the manifold is simply connected. If the uh, fundamental group is Finite but not trivial, then uh, we just get some direct product with whatever parallel transport is generated by non trivial closed groups. But uh, let's not worry about these details for the moment. Okay, so uh, 
One thing, I, uh, one reason I wanted to mention this uh, relation to dimension A is because uh, it appears that uh, I'm doing a bit of a compromise here. Like it's very difficult to find a lot of examples of torsion free GT manifolds. There are only three constructions known today, and they're all three quite non trivial. So, like, is it we're now trying to study something which is easier? But so I'm going to make a case for this near parallel to such structures that it's not a compromise, but it's also an interesting space. So one uh, kind of reason is this uh, relation to another special one this itself, which basically uh, another interesting story, which may be worth another call. Um, okay. Anyway. Uh, let's now look at this possibility. So, like I said, three Sasakian manifolds will not be discussed, but I'll look at the Sasakian stream Einstein and also proper So, first of all, uh, let's. Uh, so, the name actually hides the relation with another uh, story of geometry uh, the Sasakian manifolds uh, without Einstein. What does that mean? It means that uh, you perform a Riemannian cone on a four dimensional manifold. Uh, we'll get actually a tailor manifold. So that will be an uh, integral almost complex structure, and the matrix will be tailor with respect to So we're basically are trying to do something in multi dimension uh, which uh, parallels the familiar complex tailor geometry in the dimension. So then, okay, suppose we got this a second manifold. Uh, the form, one form, dual to a vector field along this uh, direction. Uh, so we do this uh, dr, uh, d by dr, uh, divided by r, and then apply to apply the whole of structure. We get something tangent to s. Uh, so that happens to be what is called the contact form, which means that if you multiply it by a maximum power of uh, d eta, we will get the non trivial form, non dimension. Right? And here, uh, in many cases, when I'll talk about the code, I will identify its cross section for radius of one with the initial one dimensional manifold. Uh, the Kahle form can be written uh, by, so there is a Kahle potential which, uh, which, can, which can arise. Well, not quite potential, but at least there is one form whose uh, exterior derivative is the Kahle form. Uh, now, uh, it's uh, very helpful to ask for X condition. So suppose that this vector field J uh, D by R uh, on S integrates to uh, S1 action. So it has closed into trajectories and uh, the action is free. Then it's a principal bundle. And one can uh, prove, so that's some known result in the literature, that the base space, uh, which will then be given dimensional, is again Kähler, moreover Kähler Einstein, with positive curvature. Um, and uh, moreover, the point of loss of the circle bundle will be given by the uh, Kähler form. Uh, so that's of the prediction because the manifold X will be actually algebraic uh, and simply connected. Uh, this is a smooth one of variety, meaning that its first term class is represented by a positive one one form. Uh, okay, now this, what I just said. It works in every one dimension, but something special in dimension seven is that we can uh, build on any uh, regular society in state seven manifold the canonical S1 family of uh, nearly parallel G2 structures. So here is in, in doing uh, the explicit formula. Uh, so a, a bit of a verification of the notation. So the capital omega is uh, what is known as a horizontal KL form. We pull back the form from a KL Einstein manifold to the S1. Circle bundle. And uh, the, uh, likewise, the uh, capital psi is this uh, horizontal version of, uh, horizontal in the sense of this principal bundle, horizontal version of the holomorphic form, uh, working form. So we start from uh, this LDR uh, cone, it has a trivial canonical bundle for zero forms. We take a trivialization, the holomorphic form, and then the interior product with the this uh, radius uh, vector field to get a well defined uh, free form on uh, the manifold S1. And it turns out that uh, the holomorphic uh, four form is um, determined up to a multiplication by a complex constant of modulus one. We can take any such factor, and that's the S1 family. Uh, so that's a result by Alexander and Senna Mann. 
uh, in 2012. Uh, excuse me, may I ask you one question? Yeah. So in this case, uh, you have a vibration of S over this final manifold. Yeah. And you, by multiplying, now you obtain another Keller manifold. So what is the relation between this Keller manifold you obtain by S cross R cross and this S? Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, so oh, sorry, S cross R, yeah. The yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, can I, for example, can I compactify this R plus times S to a well, positive uh, manifold? Uh, if you just look at it as a vector bundle, uh, yeah, so you have you have this circle bundle, which is uh, of course you can relate it to a complex line bundle, uh, which um, again you can think of R as a polar coordinate on the fiber on the complex plane. So yeah, then but uh, that will only make sense as a, if you are looking at this uh, cone as a complex vector bundle. Uh, we are doing here remaining geometry, so. Uh, so in fact, it's, I don't think that in general the metric will uh, yes, probably will not extend over the cone, cone uh, single point. So it's a, it's basically a com yeah you will get a complex line bundle with some particular metric. Yeah. Well, I think I can, I'm not sure whether I'm going to say anything well more interesting than that. But, but I mean, yeah. it is kind of a projectivized bundle over. It's not really projectivized. Uh, yeah. It's really a complex line bundle. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You can, of course, projectivize it, right. but without any guarantee what kind of remaining metric you will get on the total space. Mm -hmm. that, or rather, well, you can get some metric, but it needs to be nicely related to the metric we're considering here. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. So, I mean, yeah, uh, so as far as complex geometry is concerned, uh, what you suggest makes perfect sense and can be done. But uh, it's um, not clear how it's compatible with the remaining geometry we want to do here. Uh, I see, I see. But well, anyway, you obtain some, you know, something between Keller manifold and Keller manifold. Actually, the, the, the objective here is yeah. to yeah. study something in the odd dimensional manifold. Right, right. So the Keller manifold here I use as a stepping stone. So we're using. Well, since in uh, even the mansion we have the power of uh, holomorphic geometry methods, uh, it's attractive to try and well, get these methods to help study all the dimensional geometry, even though that cannot be a complex manifold. I see. So that's uh, what, what one, one possibility to do something in that direction. Can I ask one question? Sure. So I mean, last time also you told me trust that S has kind of quasi hot composition, right? Homology. If, uh, uh, if they yes. said some G2 structure, uh, then uh, Riemannian. I, yes, I said, but it's uh, not about S. That, there are two different statements. Uh, let me probably write them down. Uh, you have a decomposition of differential forms. So, uh, like for example, uh, uh, on the R of S, uh, will have uh, will be a direct sum of something, and this something. Uh, is determined by a presentation period, the presentation of the group in this case a G2 on the space of R forms on R7. Right, right. So uh, now, um, if you want a similar statement for the Dirac homology to resemble this uh, well-known here of manifold property, then you need the G2 structure to be torsion-free. So uh, if S were uh, would have a closed and co-closed uh, free form, then indeed you can decompose uh, Diram of S. But since uh, we are looking at another class near Kela, uh, there, there is no reason for that to, to work. Because the, the structure has torsion. It's uh, similar, think of an almost complex manifold versus complex manifold. Uh, uh, Thank you. Right. No, I mean, so, that's a good question on the way. Um, so, uh, right, uh, we can then, well, something in this top of this slide uh, where it works in any odd dimension, but in some dimension we can actually write down this uh, form of G2 type, and it turns out that this will be a nearly uh, parallel G2 structure. So, D5 will be proportional to uh, for style 5. 
Well, uh, I'll uh, s uh, say something about the associated three folds. Um, so this is, in fact, what the main results of this talk will be about. So uh, yeah, well, uh, yesterday I made a case for four associatives. So this is a kind of similar sounding name, but very different geometry. So this is a special type of three-dimensional manifolds defined by the property that if you restrict phi to this three manifold, you'll get a volume form. Uh, well, volume form uh, determined by the induced metric and the orientation that we choose on the uh, three-dimensional manifold. So then uh, this uh, Stokes theorem trick, which I showed, still works uh, for the three form this time, and shows that uh, well, this uh, y will be volume minimizing and minimal, uh, volume minimizing this uh, in its homology class if it's compact. In fact, the trick works without compactness, but then one will probably will need to consider some kind of homology with a compact support or something like that. So where uh, one can have a finite integral with expressing difference of volumes. Okay, so that's uh, well, uh, 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 another instance of Harvey and Wilson calibrated geometry uh, type of animals and manifolds uh, determined by an appropriate type of traditional uh, formal manifold. So uh, now uh, this uh, would be. Uh, uh, we need uh, if phi to be zero, but in the present case, uh, the equation was if phi is not zero, but rather uh, some was it was well, some non-zero number times star phi. So therefore, our associatives will not be calibrated uh, in nearly parallel three folds, but the good news is they will still be minimal. Not necessarily volume minimizing, not a kind of local minimal volume function, but a greater of point nevertheless. So this is because uh, uh, the if you consider the cone on Y as a subcone of the cone on, uh, on the sub manifold, that would be a special type of four-dimensional submanifold or eight manifold of this spin seven manifold. And that one will be actually calibrated. Uh, because this uh, spin cell structure will be integrable. So that we're talking about a uh, cross-section of locally volume minimizing the minimum uh, manifold, so that's again minimal, a bit of a minimal. And uh, moreover, it turns out that in this around the great classification of G2 structures, this is the largest class, so we uh, either we need D5 equals zero or D5 proportional to star phi. To have, a, to have a general property that anything associated is minimal. So that's another motivation point for studying uh, nearly parallel G2 manifolds and uh, just to do uh, associative kinds uh, manifolds. And actually, before anyone asks, if anyone was thinking of asking, uh, you might say uh, whether at some point I will be talking about four associatives uh, in nearly parallel G2 manifolds. The answer is no. And the reason is uh, they do not occur. So in, uh, it's impossible to have uh, four associative uh, submanifolds in nearly parallel uh, two manifolds. Uh, for example, it's easy to explain why it's not possible uh, to have compact ones. If they would be compact, they would be more minimizing uh, in their uh, homology class. But since uh, the uh, star phi is exact, so if you integrate, uh, you will get zero by Stokes theorem. So this volume minimizing manifold will have zero volume. So that means any possible co-associative uh, in near analogy manifold will be a point. So that's why only one special class occurs in this type of sub manifolds. Okay, let's now return to uh, Sasaki Einstein, and so I'll start introducing uh, the actual results of this talk. So basically, the, uh, before I do that, objective is to try and understand a bit better what uh, what exactly are those uh, three-dimensional associatives in nearly parallel submanifolds. Very little is currently known, so some, much of this results is basically a case study. We're looking at some. Uh, particular examples of um, some manifolds where we can actually get examples of associatives as uh, a first step towards uh, trying to build a general theory. 
So, okay, um, if uh, uh, the sun manifold, which is nearly parallel, is a Sakya Einstein, so that means the cone is a Richard Flat Kela, but not Flat Kela, uh, then, okay, the cone is complex manifold. Inside complex manifold, uh, inside Kela complex manifolds, two special classes are uh, complex surfaces. And uh, since it's a scalar manifold, it has syntactic form, so we can talk about Lagrangian manifolds. Both have real dimensional form. Both happen to be calibrated uh, in the eight dimensional sense. Therefore, their cross sections will be associatives. So, the, uh, inside the cell manifolds, these are known as invariant manifolds, if the cone is a complex surface, or special Legendrian cell manifolds, if the cone is a Lagrangian. Uh, actually, in that case, it will be special Lagrangian, um, so meaning that uh, certain restriction on the uh, well, Lagrangian angle. Uh, so here's the first result. Um, so assume that uh, S is a radio Sasaki Einstein manifold uh, with a complex form theta. So we know that it's a principal S1 bundle of a Kiel Einstein trifold. Let's denote the Kilo form by omega, so then uh, it's known that the E3 is uh, pulled back of omega under the bundle map. And consider this uh, map of the measure family of parallel structures. Then uh, we can get the example of associative threefold by starting from any complex curve in this uh, base threefold. And then ellipsing, well, taking its range, so the restriction of the S1 bundle uh, will be a three dimensional sub manifold, and that's an uh, invariant meaning of associative. Uh, invariant meaning that it uh, responds to a complex surface. So that, that actually works for any uh, any geometric structure in that circle matrix. Uh, so basically, the proof is a bit of an exercise in. Uh, Complex geometry, in particular, to figure out the uh, topological type of this uh, circle bundle of, uh, of, uh, of the surface. Uh, in uh, particular examples, uh, so well, first of all, we can see it will be invariant under this S1 action, which is isometric action on the complex remaining G manifold. Uh, then uh, every deformation of a complex curve gives a deformation of the associative. Uh, so, uh, particular examples uh, that we could uh, find. Um, so, we take uh, for um, threefold the product of three projective lines, uh, take uh, the Kähler form uh, corresponding to the pullbacks of uh, three standard Kähler forms and see the ones, uh, normalize in such a way that they are uh, given integer on homology, homology plus. And, um, so then uh, we take this uh, corresponding circle bundle, so whose uh, order class is this sub and kill forms. Uh, so that gives a homogeneous space. I wrote down an alternative description that uh, shows why it is a homogeneous space. So that's one example that works. Another, we can replace uh, the product of two CP1s with Del Paso surface, the blow up of CP2 in uh, some fine many points. We take the sum of the uh, Forms of CB1 and Bopetso, and again use the uh, curve will be CB1 times the point in Bopetso. Uh, then we'll get uh, in all these cases a uh, 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 circle bundle which is topologically three dimensional sphere. So, in other words, it's a half bundle uh, topologically speaking. So, may I ask you why you blow only of two? Because if you blow more points, uh, no, 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 if less, you... less point. Ah. Yeah. Uh, well, basically, it's um, actually not, not uh, sorry. I think uh, let's uh, misunderstand here. Uh, K is not the number of points that we blow. Uh, blow up. It's actually an algebraic degree, or, so that's the you know, surface of an algebraic surface. But the number of points I can blow uh, uh, um, um, oh, to, <laughs> um, one restriction is we need that to be a final manifold. So. Um, Thank you. 
Maybe I'll, okay, uh, uh, can I uh, then ask, answer this question after the talk? I'll need to. Um, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, the answer is that there will be some uh, just uh, either alternative description or something will go wrong with the definitions that we use. Um, but anyway, so this is uh, something that works. Uh, now we can, in fact, not necessarily take CD1 tensor point, but we can have a graph of a map. For example, from CP1 to a product of two CP1s, which has a nice complex analysis description. Uh, it's a choice of two rational functions, one complex rational. So, generic here is present so that we get a smooth subject. And we have a single one. So, here's now another theorem. Uh, this time, the next result is about the special the genre type uh, of social tubes. So once again, assume a regular society and science sub-manifold uh, with a small form. Uh, so the circle bundle with coil of class given by the Kähler form. Uh, so the base manifold is uh, Kähler Einstein final threefold. Um, so then, uh, first of all, a nice recognition. Uh, if we uh, have a compact special regime and sub-manifold, then uh, so the uh, um, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, if we restrict um, uh, the, uh, our pi to this uh, to, to some manifold, we'll get a finite covering of some Lagrangian some manifold in X. So this tells us uh, what kind of some manifold inside the funnel uh, can be possible candidates for associatives. Uh, now, a bit more is true. Um, if uh, uh, so, if this our threefold is uh, compact simply connected uh, 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 so the four by one grand conjectures of the Lagrangian and three sphere, then uh, it leads to uh, S1 family of Legendre and manifolds. Um, so, in such a way that uh, phi will project it to our Lagrangian. So if it's simply connected, then uh, things are good. We can um, yeah, we can lift it, and there will be still a closed um, uh, manifold. Uh, now the strongest result is the last part. Uh, so if we assume that there is an isometric anti-holomorphic involution of our Kähler Einstein funnel, uh, then the fixed point set is not empty. It will be Lagrangian. And will be homomorphically lift to a special genre, and uh, therefore minimal associates of manifold or to this society Einstein. So uh, the, this last part is the one which uh, is particularly useful for finding examples. So here are actual examples. Uh, so we can, for example, consider this uh, manifold. Uh, let me just remind it was an act. Previous slide. Uh, so the um, uh, so this Q one 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 this circle bundle uh, and uh, well then uh, uh, we take a three torus defined by the uh, identify CP one with a sphere use standard spherical coordinates. And then uh, just, uh, it's a way to uh, express an equatorial circle in each sphere. And so then the product of uh, three circles will give us a uh, three torus. And that leads to a one dimensional family. Uh, uh, sorry, that, that um, leads to a family of uh, yeah, minimal genre and three torus. 
Uh, finally, because uh, well, we can choose the starting point of the region, so the S1 can be of a special application that is also minimal determinants and minimal associates. Uh, so for the next result, uh, we use the Delpasso surface P3, um, which is the important point is this is a toric variety, and it has a kilo Einstein metric is there under the historic action. Uh, so that, uh, um, maybe I'll comment here a little bit, the existence of a kilo Einstein metric, of course, if curvature is a notoriously difficult problem, for some, uh, Surfaces of it holds, this is uh, problem is understood, but uh, the solution, the actual key Einstein metric, is given by a solution of uh, some uh, difficult PDEs. Uh, and, um, well, in this case of P3, uh, we are lucky and it's possible to trace through, through the existence proof to check that this key Einstein metric is symmetric. So that implies that we can build an isometric and evolution, which is the condition uh, asked in the third part of the theorem, and therefore uh, prove that uh, there exists a minimal associative three torus in nearly parallel G to manifold, which is a circle bundle of uh, C1 times the uh, Yeah, as before, the term class of the bundle is given by the key forms. Data. Uh, generator of uh, the second homology of CP1, and we get the scalar form of scalar uh, Einstein metric uh, on the past surface, uh, which then happens to be uh, uh, integral. Uh, so it gives an integral class. Right. Okay, so uh, right, this was uh, the set of results for uh, the Sasaki and Einstein uh, near parallel uh, digital structures. Uh, now, there is another class which is called proper uh, near parallel uh, digital structures. So, here is again a particular example uh, where these structures occur. This is a so called uh, Aleph uh, Volock spaces. So, they are comp compact simply connected cell manifolds. Uh, we start from SU3 and take a portion by particular embedding of a circle subgroup. So we just take diagonal uh, e to the uh, exponent of uh, i k theta, exponent, exponent of uh, i l theta, and then, well, m is of course determined, so that the determinant will be one. So there are three, uh, uh, two independent uh, inter integer parameters in the choice of this space. Uh, we ask that uh, the, well, uh, the two are co prime uh, integers, and uh, well, one of them has to be positive, that's no loss of generality, and the other one will have to be non zero. Uh, now, uh, there are, okay, I'll a little bit get ahead of myself, there will be two exceptional cases of these power flow spaces, and the rest is known as generic cases. So, special cases, exceptional ones are when k is 1 and l is plus or minus 1. Um, so, the results will be different in those cases. Um, so now, uh, since it's a quotient of a uh, group as you three, we can see the basis of left and right one forms, and we can choose it in such a way that one of the basis elements uh, will correspond to a one-dimensional subgroup. So the basis adapted to this subgroup uh, as one, which uh, by which we get the quotient. So then, uh, the, in the quotient space, there will be the uh, several independent forms left, um, and so we can use them to write down explicitly a family of closed G to three forms uh, depending on four real parameters. So I don't write here the full expression, but it's written down in the preprint. Uh, so it is known that uh, up to a scaling, exactly two choices of these four real parameters. Uh, will give a nearly parallel gene structure, and in that case, will be proper. So the form will be this full homogeneous state sum. So that's the normal result of the one or this one. So uh, if uh, k are not exceptional, uh, not precisely not one and minus one, then there is a fiber bundle uh, of uh, this value space over CP2. So here is this is the uh, we can 
entire portion by a particular circle in Madden, and the portion by Madden of U2. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, it's from this uh, SU2 should be SU3. Right, so then uh, the fiber will be a sphere of space form, so more precise than quotient of S3 by a cyclic group. Uh, and um, uh, it's all also this U2, uh, how it is embedded in this U3. So we can use this uh, to uh, find examples of associative free falls. Um, First of all, this vibration is not unique. Uh, there is a certain symmetry group, uh, wild group, group of uh, SO3, uh, which induces a diffeomorphism. Um, in general, it may be a diffeomorphism uh, to different uh, indices of the space, uh, from L to LM. Uh, it might sometimes be uh, the same space. Uh, so. Uh, um, Meaning that uh, maybe a symmetry of the just but in any case, it's if your morphism, so the manifold would be the same. And that gives us, uh, if we compose with this uh, upsilon, uh, we'll get different vibrations um, in general by different spherical space forms. So then uh, the result is that uh, we can check uh, that uh, if we restrict uh, the nearly parallel uh, structure to the fibers of this vibration. Uh, we'll get a volume form, so they will give us associatives. Um, uh, so that works with our k and our not plus uh, one and plus minus one. Uh, so we embedded me as a manifold, and uh, well, for uh, a typical for generic KL, there will be three different four dimensional information families uh, associatives. Uh, so what happens in those exceptional uh, cases? Uh, well, there are two possibilities. If it is one and minus one, uh, then uh, there is uh, only one homogeneous near the high structure rather than two. Um, and, uh, but also the fibers of this uh, vibration map, um, just show it again, uh, will not be a spherical space form, but rather will be S2 times S1. <coughs> But uh, the rest of the argument works, and there will still be a, a minimum of associatives. Um, if we take uh, W11, then there will be a two homogeneous near parallel structures, uh, but there will be three is a second. Um, only one of them will be three is a second. The other one will, uh, well, the other one is not very well understood, but it cannot be uh, written by the general procedure by solving equation for those. Uh, real parameters, so which I uh, <coughs> mentioned on this slide. So, uh, yeah, those are. Uh, but for for the one uh, for which this procedure uh, compilation works, uh, we'll get uh, associatives, but the heat structure will decrease a second rather than proper. So, the one they will reduce to a subgroup complex in that group. So also I mentioned in connection uh, that different uh, authors, Paul and Monik, uh, studied the same space W11, and they found by different methods uh, different examples of uh, associated three folds, which are S11 bundles or complex surface of any genes. So interestingly, that they uh, studied this exceptional case, whereas we studied the general case. So we results do not really overlap, but rather <coughs> So that's uh, in this uh, supply of different constructions which produce examples of minimal social free folds. Uh, I'll mention on the last slide uh, something which is, uh, which we still uh, hope to understand better. So one that relates to this, uh, um, um, uh, this uh, examples of the genre of time. So yeah, like I said, the challenge was that uh, to find the asymmetric anti-homotic evolution. For example, I could do it for the uh, or P3, but uh, for the P4 and higher, uh, well, uh, 
uh, first of all, it's not always true that uh, not all fun of three folds or two folds have a real Einstein metric. Uh, but even if it exists, it's not clear whether it will have an isometric and isomorphic evolution. Because the metric often is given implicitly by existence results for a solution of the uh, So that uh, remains a bit of a challenge. Um, also, for our polar spaces, which are given rather explicitly, so we get uh, this big supply of examples, but again, the uh, natural question is uh, whether these are all associated with minimal trifolds or whether one can find further methods uh, to find it. Um, well, uh, that's something which uh, remains an open question, but hopefully, it, uh, some further ideas and more research into that. More examples. So, okay, that's, I think, uh, yes, uh, what I want to say. So, basically, this is a, a bit of a project which starts investigation in the uh, uh, area which, uh, which still has a not all questions. Thank you. Questions? Maybe one question. So when you have the S1 vibration and you have a, a curve in, in, the, in the basis space, yeah. and you pull up, you got something with finite fibers, right? In some point, you said in your theorem that it was a finite number of points in the fiber. You uh, Maybe you can go back. Wait a minute. No, it will be a time. Did I understand correctly? Uh, you're talking about this. Uh, uh, point two. It was a point two before. Yeah, this. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's locally in one. It's a, finite, it's a finite covering. Yeah. So is that because the fundamental group of the total space is finite? Or uh, no, it's, it, uh, it's a finite covering because it's a locally different morphism. But uh, I, it's, um, well, it's, it's not clear that it will be a bijection. But I mean, what, why cannot you get something that is not finite, but a lot of, you have an S1 uh, cover and then you can get something in him, right? Uh, because uh, the, these things that covers will not be compact. So what, what is, um, yeah, yeah, so the inverse here is defined compact in the summary box. So yeah, well, okay. the answer is compactness. Okay, thank you. And then this base X can be also funnel before. Uh, no, S is some dimensional manifold. Oh, no, X, X, X is, can be uh, funnel before. Um, probably yes, but to have on uh, study this case. But generally, for all the folds, there is a pretty good chance to extend the results that are known for smooth manifolds. So, probably true. But of course, in that case, we'll probably need to allow some kind of singularities, probably what all singularities uh, for some manifolds as well. But, uh, yeah. Of course, then it would be more interesting questions to consider final variety, not necessarily a smooth one, uh, which uh, well, it would be just all before similarities. But that's a whole uh, new question because we will need to bring in more algebraic geometry investigation. But I mean, if, so you mean that the X can be any? No, uh, uh, not any threefold. Yeah. Uh, it will have to admit K line side matrix. Yeah. Actually, I'm not sure it's even known. For many final threefolds, it's known either that they admit K line time, uh, some do not. Yeah. But you mean X can be any, if X can be final? If it's final and has a K line side metric, then uh, yes. That actually was known some time ago, so uh, yeah, you, uh, you can then choose a killer form and represent an integer homology class, so it makes sense to ask for that to be chalk class of S1 model. Uh, then uh, you can build a 
Yeah, if it's a threefold, so you get seven manifolds, so then there is this result which gives a special G to geometry. Torsion free G2 structures. This is a um, program, this enumerative program counting associatives. Ah. Does this have any, what's, is there any viewpoint? Well, that, that, that's a very good question. But uh, yeah, we, did, well, we have some time. Well, uh, I'll, I'll need to explain something before I get to the actual question. Uh, I haven't said anything about deformation theory of associatives, uh, but I could. Because it exists. Uh, so, uh, for let's start from uh, first torsion free energy manifolds, which are not those that I was talking about uh, today. Uh, so, that's when three form is closed and four closed. Uh, the linearization of the formation operator is a self adjoint elliptic operator, uh, which means that uh, it either doesn't have a kernel and doesn't have a core kernel. So, geometrically, it means the associate will be rigid. Uh, so it doesn't have any deformations. If the kernel is non-trivial, then uh, the index is zero, so there will be a core kernel. Core kernel is abstraction. Uh, it's a problem with application of implicit function theorem, uh, which on the analysis side uh, helps us to deal with deformations. So then there will be a like a virtual tension space to those deformations about which we don't know. They might exist or might not. Uh, in fact, uh, so that's known as abstracted deformations. A uh, basic example, consider flat seven torus. Uh, it's easier to draw a particular submanifold, three torus inside it, which will be associative, and which you can explicitly write down these deformations. So that's where the kernel of the analytic operator does have the elements of the kernel do integrate to well-defined deformations, despite the presence of the core kernel and the problem with this implicit function theorem. Uh, but in general, uh, it's uh, yeah, one needs some trick to overcome this abstraction. Uh, it is, in fact, there is a, a rather general result which says that if you slightly perturb the torsion feature to structure, uh, then you can uh, achieve that the kernel will be trivial. So the uh, associative will become rigid. Um, so it's a bit, I'm not sure whether it's a fully rigorous theorem, but it's pretty close to a theorem that. A generic uh, torsion feature to structure uh, has a uh, region associatives only. Uh, now, this is all about torsion free. Uh, for more general geometric structures, including this near parallel, uh, well, yeah, uh, there have been works about uh, deformation theory, particularly linearizing the deformation problem. Uh, it's, well, it's slightly more complicated than a differential operator. I really don't have a short description. Of, uh, I, I can say in which paper that operator is written down. In the present case of nearly parallel, uh, we might, uh, this operator may be not like maximally complicated because uh, deformations or associatives will correspond to deformations of those special force and manifolds in A dimensions. Uh, but those uh, four dimensions of manifolds, they are called K as a manifolds, uh, their deformation theory is in general again abstracted. Uh, it's linearized by a certain gear type operator, uh, so there is a way to find its index. Um, uh, also, I probably can find the kernel, but well, that, that's not a very easy story. So, what I produce here, when well, we saw the uh, there are various examples, but sometimes you have deformations. That's not a contradiction. Uh, even if there is a kernel, if the kernel is non trivial, it may be possible to integrate it. So, uh, so I see that this is uh, not a contradiction to that uh, program of counting associatives. The program you asked about is uh, so if we look at uh, torsion free the manifolds and uh, the engineering to structure. So then all the associatives are region. Suppose we have some kind of a compactness results for the moduli space. So moduli space will have dimension zero. So compactness means it's finite. So we can count them, maybe with signs or weights, and hopefully we'll get some kind of invariant. Uh, so again, in this direction, there are results. Uh, uh, but, uh, I don't think there is a finished theory. Uh, in fact, some of the results indicate that 
if there will be a Finnish theory, it's not particularly simple. Or at least our present understanding is doesn't make it particularly simple. So, um, well, various well, interesting people uh, that, uh, as far as I know, have not necessarily agreed. Uh, so, I mean, that, that's without going into the details. Uh, so, that's, um, yeah, hope now we some kind of answer. So, what you asked to is related but not exactly uh, uh, because of the Thank you. Thank you.